The right and power to say no comes from struggles and resistances of communities on the ground. It is born when a community stands up and says, we have the final say about our land. It comes alive and takes root when we take a collective responsibility for our futures. The right to say no is a demand by communities for democratic, community-centered development. This is our resistance to an extractivist, neoliberal development model. It is about respect for our right to a decent life, for health, well-being and wellness, to continue producing food on our terms, to living in harmony with nature. We defend our way of life and the environment. We stand for a self-defined and self-determined development path. Power and resources must be redistributed so that we can shape our development without external intervention and coercion. The struggle for the right to say no, resistance to extractivism, and to demand an end to corporate impunity is not limited to South Africa. In fact, there are many examples of resistances across the continent. Let's take a look. Since the late 1990s, the Mpondo community of Umkukundlovu have waged a struggle against mining on their ancestral land. Now, they continue their stand against the prospecting exploration of oil and gas on the coast in protection of the commons and their way of life. An Australian mining company bought mining rights to start operating a titanium mine on Amatiba land in Olobeni. Its plan is to dig one of the 10 largest open cast mines in the world to be operational for 25 years. To support mining operations, this project plans to build a highway detour through the heart of their land and will force 200 families to abandon their land, livelihoods, and spiritual foundations to make way for it. The community organized themselves into the Amadiba Crisis Committee, ACC, and approached the courts to force the suspension of the project, a battle they won. But this did not come without corrupt traditional leadership and deadly repression designed to quell their resistance. The ACC again approached the courts to defend their way of life, defending their right to say no to development projects that are harmful to them and the environment. The court handed down a landmark judgment that recognized the community's right to say no to the mining project. Despite the ACC being able to halt the mining project, the South African National Roads Agency, SANRO, is forging ahead with the plans to construct the highway along the coast, and the community is vehemently opposing this. They have worked together to develop an alternative route that cuts into the interior of the land. They continue to engage various government departments around their proposal for an alternative. In addition, the community is resisting seismic testing in the search for oil and gas deposits by oil giant Shell. This search will impact their fishing livelihoods, their sacred and spiritual connections to the sea and the vast marine life and ecosystems. The ACC, together with other groupings, managed to successfully halt seismic testing and have Shoals prospecting rights declared invalid by the courts. The right to say no reinforces that yes. If a community can say no, it means that it can also say yes. Yes to protecting the commons. Yes to defending a way of life. People and nature cannot be separated. A community's yes embraces a vision of what we want for our families and communities, and more broadly, the kind of world we wish to live in and the future we build together. When transnational companies devastate a population's livelihoods, it is women who carry the disproportionate burden of ensuring the community's survival. Prior to the 1990s, women dairy farmers in various rural communities in Zambia provided for their families through dairy farming. Since then, things have changed. Zambia's dairy sector has largely been privatized through changes in ownership, distribution of equity, favoring industrialized farmers and the imposition of price fixes and taxes. Consequently, squeezing out small-scale dairy farmers, Parmalat, the company responsible, has killed off the alternative and historical dairy production circuits. As a result of being shut out, communities saw an increase in cases of malnutrition. To protect and insulate the community, it is the women who found themselves on the front lines of resistance, ensuring that there's food to eat, clean drinking water, and that the household is taken care of. But they also push back against the companies and the state. The women created illegal alternative distribution channels and militantly challenged the unjust activities carried out by Parmalat. The Rural Women's Assembly is a Southern African and self-organized network of rural women's movements. They have organized themselves to share their experiences and skills to challenge patriarchy and capitalism head on. In the words of the Rural Women's Assembly, women are the guardians of land, life, seeds, and love. 
Right to Say No is founded on collective resistance, mostly led by women. It is very centrally about power, directly challenging the dominant power of governance, the political elite, and transnational corporations. Saying no is deeply political, as it recognizes the gendered impacts of extractivism, challenges systems of power, and asserts the right of communities to define their own interests and determine their own futures. The Congo River is Africa's second largest river. It is home to an immense biodiversity and supports the world's second largest rainforest. This rich and unique ecosystem is also home to tens of thousands of people. It is threatened by the controversial mega dam project, Inga 3, which will, according to the official estimates, displace 37,000 people and affect the lives of many more up and downstream. Unfortunately, the affected community is no stranger to the trauma of forced displacement and relocation. In 1972, it was for Inga 1 and Inga 2 in 1982, without being compensated for their loss and without their consent. Inga 1 and 2 have already decimated their best fishing grounds and destroyed thousands of livelihoods. In large-scale development projects such as this, the community's absence in the decision-making process led to a massive loss of land and livelihoods. Today, Inga 1 and 2 are still not fully operational. At best, they produce 60% of the electricity the dam can potentially generate. This electricity is then sold thousands of kilometers away, while many local communities still live without access to electricity. The financial cost of the dam is an additional burden to the DRC that will lead to major cuts in social spending. This will affect the lives of the local population, especially women and children. As of date, the construction of the dam has been given the green light. The case against the construction of the Inga 3 dam is emblematic of how the relationship between states and corporations is extremely toxic and harmful to communities. It illustrates that profits will be at the center of any decisions that are made under the guise of development. The right to say no challenges the capitalist drive to make profit at the expense of people and the environment. It is in defense of the commons and livelihoods. By resisting the profit drive by corporations and government to commodify everything, the right to say no is an important step forwards, reversing the concentration of wealth and power in the hands of the few and holding those responsible accountable. We demand the right to say no. No to extractivism in the defense of the commons. No to the top-down development model that exploits and abuses communities and yes to feminist-led, community-driven alternatives that secure present and future communities.